Hey, we're continuing. This is like the third week in our series on the Lord's Prayer. And when I first started it, I thought, well, I'll probably end up doing this in about a week, one Sunday. Man, the more I dig into the Lord's Prayer, the more I find. How many of you found the Word of God to be that way? Man, you can, you can read a scripture. You can read a story. And you've read it 20 times. And all of a sudden, something jumps out at you. And each week as I'm studying, things are beginning to, to, to really come alive. But, but I want to share this with you, this series on the, on the Lord's Prayer. Here's the main point of this series. You want to know what the main point is? It's pray. And if there's a second main point, guess what it is? Pray. And a third? Pray. The main point really, and I can't say it any better than that, is to pray. We need to be praying. The church needs to be praying. And the Lord's here. The, the Lord's prayer is here. It's in Matthew. The Lord's prayer is, the, is there because the disciples come to Jesus and they ask Jesus, they ask him what? Lord, teach us what? To pray. They could have asked him all kinds of things, right? They could have come to Jesus and said, Lord, teach us to worship. That would be important. Or Lord, teach us to share the gospel. Out of all the things that they could have asked him, they come to Jesus and they ask him, Lord, teach us, teach us to pray. Now, here's what, here was our, our key verse the last couple of weeks. I'm not going to give you much of a, listen, you can always go on the website, and I really recommend this. Go on the website. You can hear the last two weeks' messages. It'll help you to stay a little bit better informed because we're going to go through this. We've got a couple more weeks, and we're going to take it by phrases. So if you missed the last couple of weeks, just go ahead and go back to the website, and you can look them up. But here's one of the verses that we looked at. It was in Luke chapter 11, verses 1 and 2, and it says this. Now, it came to pass as he was praying. We talked about this. I'm not going to get too much into it. Who is the he in that verse? Jesus was what? Praying. The one who walked on water, the one who healed the sick, the one who raised, the one who cast out demons, the one who did all of this felt the need to pray. Come on, that should be, isn't that enough right there? I mean, we should be like, okay, then if he needed to pray, guess what? So do I. And the last part of that verse, he said, Jesus said this. So he said, so Jesus said to them, when you pray, not if you pray, not you should pray. He said, when you pray. So two points real quick. Jesus prayed and he said right there in scripture that we what? We should be praying. Each and every one of us. Now here's our last verse that we had. I think this was the first week. Then he said to me, he being an angel of the Lord, an angel of the Lord came to Daniel. Now watch what happens. Then he said to me, do not fear. The angel of the Lord says to Daniel, do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words or your prayers were heard. Your prayers are heard. You're, pr you're, you're no different than Daniel. And this angel tells him, your prayers were heard. And I have come because of your words. I have come because of your prayers. Listen, the angel of the Lord came to Daniel. Why? Not a trick question, I promise. Because of his prayers. The angel of the Lord responded because of his prayers. Listen to me. Your prayers, and I'm, this is the best words I can use, literally activate angels. Your prayers literally get angels to respond. The Father in heaven hears your prayers and he sends angels to fulfill some of the requests. And, and, and we're no different than Daniel. And it's really clear right there. Your prayers were heard. I have come. An angel of the Lord had come because he had prayed. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. And, and if you know that verse, um, that was two weeks ago. We looked at that. The angel of the Lord responded to his prayers. If you were here a couple weeks, if not, go back. Remember the angel of the Lord was held up, though? And we talked about that that very first week. He was held up. There was a battle. There was a spiritual battle in the heavenlies. And it says that he was held up. He, he was in a battle with the prince of Persia. And we talked about that, how, how there are spiritual, there, 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 there are territories, there are, there are territorial spirits that reign. And I gave you a couple of scriptures and different ones, but there are, there are specific spirits sometimes that, that have control, a stronghold over a territory. It could be a lying spirit. It could be, we, we looked at one that actually was in the Bible and it was over the, over the, uh, the Cretans, but it was a lying spirit. And as I was uh, praying this week, 
Um, I told you, I think it was last week or the week before, I can't remember which weeks, they all kind of run together. But, but we've begun to, at least I've begun to walk this school area. And, and I, I come down here once a week and I walk the school area or I walk the neighborhood, taking back, breaking strongholds in the name of Jesus that I believe are over this territory. And it was funny this week, uh, my wife said, well, I want to go with you. I want to, I want to go walk. So we walked this neighborhood over there. But you know, as I was walking, you know what I was thinking? The Bible says that one can what? Put a thousand to flight, two, 10,000. It doesn't just double, right? One only puts a thousand, not only, but one puts a thousand to flight, two put 10,000. Can you imagine in our nation what a whole church praying can put to flight in our nation? Because I so believe that there is this lying spirit, and this isn't political, but I believe there's a lying spirit over our nation. And yeah, it is in our politics, it's in our churches, it's in our government. It's in, listen, most of what we deal with today is because of a lying spirit. Most of the issues we have in our country are because of a lying spirit. A lying spirit that comes along and says, no, it's just a fetus, it's just tissue, it's not really a baby. That's a lying spirit. A lying spirit that has been whispering in so many people's ears, it's okay to take your own life. It's okay. No, it's not. It's a lying spirit and it's going, it's wreaking havoc in this nation. But listen, if the church, if we the church would just rise up and begin to pray and bind up some of these strongholds, we're going to see victory in that area. Amen? Man, the church, the, this is really kind of why I want to teach all of this. We ha- the church, we have to wake up. I, I read a stat, um, 30 million Christians don't vote. Again, this isn't political, Democrat or Republican, but, but it also said that 30 million would have swayed a lot of the issues that we're dealing with in our nation. If 30 million Christians would have just voted on some of the things that we're battling with and dealing with, it would have changed some of the laws. It would have changed. Listen, church, I'm speaking to you. I'm speaking to me. I'm speaking to all of us. We've got to rise up and begin to pray. And that's what this series is really about. I think it was last week or the week before I told you, man, I do a pretty good job. I think I do at least of studying. I study the word of God. I study. I love tearing it apart. I love reading and studying the word of God. And I do a pretty good job of worship. Not, Not my quant quantity my qual not my quality of worship okay my quantity i love to worship god okay i may not be very good at it but man i love to worship god but i think i told you a few weeks ago my prayer life i could definitely definitely improve i definitely could take my prayer life up a level or two and i was sharing and we were talking at home even listen my kids need to take their prayer level up a level or two Our church needs to take the prayer level up a level or two. And I was even talking to my wife, who I didn't think needs to take her prayer level up a level or two. And I think Pastor Toyin would probably even say the same thing. They would both say, no, I need to take mine up a level too. And I look at these two and I think, God, if they need to take it up, then where where am I, right? It's like, man, I'm definitely hurting. There there was a, sometimes things just come into my head, okay? So you have to deal with me. Um. And I cannot pronounce his name anyway. The uh, NBA star who won the MVP, Giannis. Nobody knows how to pronounce it. Yacanada Tupo, okay, something like that. I don't know. My kids could probably say his name. He won the MVP this year in basketball, most valuable player. You know what he said? He said, I need to improve my game, and next year I'm going to come back even better, even stronger. This is the most valuable player in the NBA, and he has the humbleness to come back and say, no, man, there's so many areas of my game that I need to take to the next level. Listen, I'm not saying you're a backslidden Christian. I'm not saying any of that. But listen, I think all of us need to take our prayer level up to the next level. And, and if you're down here, listen, it needs to come up to here. If you're up here, then it needs to come up to there. And that's really the, the emphasis that I want to put on this, the, this teaching for the, next, for the last few weeks and the next couple of weeks. We have to take prayer seriously, and we need to take it up a level. Amen? So I want you to do this with me. We did it last week. We're going to do it every week. Um, I talked about, I meant to call my mom. I have to call my mom this week. Um, I talked about memorizing the Lord's Prayer. I think it's important. And I told you last week, I have no idea how come I have that memorized. My mom, I believe my mom made me memorize the Lord's Prayer in a dinner prayer that we used to pray too. And we weren't even Christian. We weren't even Christian, but I memorized it. So I want you all to just say it with me. It'll be in King James Version. It'll be up on the screen. 
Matthew chapter 6, and we'll start in verse 9. Are you ready? Say this with me. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Hey, last week I showed you that, that the Lord's Prayer starts with praise, and the middle is filled with all kinds of asking and petitions. We're asking God for stuff, and then it ends with praise. So it starts with praise and ends with praise, but in the middle is a whole lot of asking. Is a whole lot of asking. And we barely touched that last week, but, it, but, but God wants you to ask him for things. It's okay. It's okay. So this week, this week we start on the asking part of it all. And we're going to look at two things. Um, Matthew 6, 11, it says this. Give us this day, what? Our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. God wants you and I, God wants us to pray for our physical needs. God wants us, he's telling us right here in the Lord's Prayer, to pray for physical, for physical provision. Listen, it's not wrong to pray that. Follow me on this, and I I should be hearing some big amens in just a moment, okay? It is not wrong to pray for a nice house. It is not wrong to pray for a big house. It is not wrong to pray for a nice house in a nice area, in a nice neighborhood with good schools. There's nothing wrong with that. Listen, there, there, it, it's okay. It's okay. It's a good idea. And this is what the scripture is saying. Listen, it's okay to pray for a nice car. Listen, it's okay to pray for a dependable car. It's okay to pray for a bigger car. Yeah? We, um, most of you know, we have nine kids. Okay. So there were stages in our, in our life where it was like, we were praying obviously for a bigger car. Okay. When you had nine cars and there, and there was times in our lives when we were praying for the smaller car too, that we got to a point where it's like, okay, God, we need to get rid of this 15 passenger van. Now we just don't need it anymore. Okay. We actually had one at one time. Okay. And it was like, God, we need another car. We don't need this 15-passenger van. But there was a point when it was like, I don't know what we own, but this little tiny Toyota isn't going to get the whole family in there. God, we need a bigger car. Listen, it's okay to pray those things. It's okay to pray those things. Listen, we had had an instance where one of our kids was driving a car, and it seemed like a really nice car. And then it ran really good when it ran. (laughs) It was not dependable at all at all and because of some issues and different things so we were praying for another for for a car for this this kid i can't say my kids names because every time i mention them by name i own five dollars up here okay so we were praying for this kid for a car and i can't tell you all the details but god answered our prayers and it was literally a miracle on the day that this, that 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 this person this kid got that car it was literally a miracle God wants you to ask for bigger things, for nicer things, for a good car, for a dependable car. God said, it's okay. Listen, God wants you to ask for a job. And if you're thinking, well, I've already got a job. You want a better job? Now, maybe you're happy where you're at, and I hope you are. And I hope you are satisfied. But would you like a promotion? Would you like a better job? Come on. God wants you to ask for a promotion. God wants you to ask for a better job. God is, God is right here in his prayers. He's saying, come and ask me for all of these things. Ask me for all of these things. One more quick testimony. Um, some of you know I worked for Stater Brothers Markets in their warehouse for 30-some years. I got that job because I got laid off at another job. It was when construction went, went just downhill. So I decided I was going to go work in a grocery warehouse, and I worked there for 30-some years. It was great pay, great medical benefits, allowed us to have nine kids, okay? But, but when I got the job, I, I had run into a good friend who said, he had a friend who was really high up in the company. And that if I just went in, put in my application first, he would call his friend and get me in, at least get me into an interview. So I went in, put in my application, came back home, whatever. Um, I got a phone call. Got a phone call. Hey, you want to come down for an interview? So I went down, 
got interviewed and hired the same day, same day. I came home to call our friend and just to thank him, say, hey, and I called him up, hey, thanks for uh, putting in a good word for me. I got the job. And he was laughing. He says, well, just one problem. He's like, I didn't get a chance to call him yet. I didn't get a chance to call him. But guess what? Somebody else called him on my behalf. Amen. So, so listen to me. It's okay. God wants us to pray for all of these things. He knows what you need of. The Bible said we looked at it last week before you even ask. But that didn't say that you're not to ask. Just because he knows doesn't mean he doesn't want you to ask. He said, I know what you need before you ask. He didn't say, I know what you need, so don't bother asking. He said, I know what you need before you even ask. God wants you to ask for all of these things. For, and yes, God even wants you to ask for food, for bread, okay? Now, now here's the problem, and here's why I'm saying this. It's because, and, and I mean this with all love, okay? But... There'll always be, there'll always be a well-meaning Christian who will come up to you when you're praying for a nicer home, when you're praying for a more dependable or a bigger car. There'll always be a well-meaning Christian that'll come up to you and say, well, that's just selfish. That's just selfish. There are little kids who need water in blah, 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 blah. That is just selfish. Can I tell you this morning? No, it's not. Okay? No, it's not. It is not selfish. And let me, let me just tell you why. Because Jesus, right here in the Lord's Prayer, is telling us to pray that way. So it's not selfish. Jesus himself is telling us. Remember, we talked about that over the last couple of weeks. This isn't my prayer. This isn't the disciples' prayer. This is Jesus, what? Telling them how to pray. Jesus told them, when you pray... Pray like this. Pray this way. Jesus is basically saying right here, I want you to ask, and this will, this, you got to go back and listen to this, but Jesus is basically saying, I want you to ask our Father, I want you to ask our Father for daily bread. Give us. Give us. That's asking. Give us. Let, let me tell you, if you don't know God this morning, let me just tell you this about God. Our God is a giver, amen? How many of you know God? God is a giver. He likes to, he loves to provide for his children. He's a provider. How many of you remember some of the names of God? I think there's seven. I was just jotting them down as I was taking notes. Jehovah Rapha. How many of you know that word? Jehovah Rapha. You know what that means? The God who what? The God who heals. Um, how about Jehovah Nisi? God is our banner, Jehovah, Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace. There's Jehovah Shama, Jehovah, I probably don't pronounce this one, Sikadu. Um, there's one more that I'm missing. But there's one that is very, very popular that a lot of people know. How many of you know which one I'm talking about? Jehovah what? Jehovah Jireh. And you know what that one means? And it's the most popular one? My provider. Jehovah Jireh. God, my provider. Listen to me. The very, one of his, the very name of God is he wants to be your provider. He wants to provide for you. God wants, so why wouldn't he in the Lord's prayer tell us, hey, ask, just ask, just ask because I want to provide for you. I want to give you stuff. I want to, it's okay to pray, give us because we have a God. It's his character to provide. Are you following me? So I, I, want, I don't ever want you to feel like, oh, I, I probably shouldn't ask for that. Yeah, you should. And it's not selfish. Now listen, if you need to, you may need to go back to last week's because you can pray amiss if you're not praying in line with his kingdom, with what his will is in his kingdom. Yes, you can be praying amiss. But for the most part, God wants you and I to ask. To ask him. And it's his character to give. Amen. So let's look at this. Give us this day our daily bread. Many believe that daily bread, that, that the way it was prayed in the Lord's Prayer, the way Jesus said it, they believe that daily bread kind of parallels, um, where was it? Exodus 16. You don't have to turn there. You'll know the story. It kind of parallels Exodus 16 when the children of Israel came out of Egypt and they were in the wilderness for 40 years and, and God gave them what? Manna. They, but, but manna was, I know the, the real name for manna. How many of you know what manna means? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> what is it? But it's bread. It was bread. God, for 40 years, God gave them what? Daily bread in the wilderness. 
daily bread in the wilderness. So, so the Lord's Prayer, when he says, give us this daily bread, it could be in a reference to, to that situation and to getting daily bread for, the, for 40 years. It, it, it could be, and it probably is. But listen, it's so much more than that. It's so much more than that. And I want to show you this because as I've been digging into this scripture, sometimes when you say a verse over and over, it's, it begins to sound funny. And I want you to listen to that verse, Matthew 6, 11, And tell me, does it sound a little bit funny to you? Give us this day our daily bread. Now, now, I, I, I think most of you know me. Um, I, I, I just don't think that sounds right. And you know that I am such a great English studier. I told you that last week. Uh, actually, my English is terrible, okay? In case you're wondering, he is? No, I'm not. In, my English is terrible. But when I look at this verse, it just doesn't sound... See, I can't even pick the right word. Grammatically correct, okay? It doesn't even sound grammatically correct. Give us this day our daily bread. To me, at least, it should just read, it should be, give us our daily bread. It's like there's too many days in there, right? Give us this day our daily bread. Why not? Why not just... Give us our daily bread. Give us our daily bread. Why not? Instead of, instead of give us, why, is, why does he write it? Give us today our daily bread. It just didn't sound right as I'm, as I'm going through it. But, but, but here's what I came up with. God wants, to, wants us to depend on him to provide for us what? Every day every day. God wants us to, to depend on him to provide for us when? Today. Not just give us our daily bread, but rather he's telling us, but rather pray this way. Today, Lord, today, give us our daily bread. Today, Lord, give us our daily bread. Think about this. <laughs> I had a little fun with this, but I want you to think about this. God designed you and I, right? We're created in his image. But God designed you. Do you all agree with me? God, but listen to me. God designed us to eat daily. He designed us to eat daily. We got, we got breakfast, brunch, lunch, snack, right? Dinner, dessert, and a midnight snack, right? Right? I don't know, that's how it works for me, right? I don't know about you, but, but God designed us to eat. God designed us to eat. God, God literally, God literally created our, our, our digestive system along with every other animal on the earth, right? God created them. God created us. He created our digestive system. He created every animal on this earth. He created their digestive system. So watch me on this. Did, how many of you knew that a, there, there are some varieties of snakes that can live up to two years without eating? Two years. Now listen, there are some crocodiles who can live up to three years without eating. And, and then there's this critter. You can put that guy up on the screen if you want. That guy right there. That's an African lungfish. I have no idea what it is, okay? It just was internet, okay? That's an African lungfish. That rascal can go for five years without eating. Five years without eating. For five years, that rascal doesn't need help from anybody or anything. For five years. For five years. Listen, listen. God could have created us like that, right? Couldn't he? God could have created us that way. How many of you are glad he didn't? Come on, come on. The, the, the scripture aside just for a minute. How many of you are glad he didn't? How many of you are looking forward to lunch or dinner tonight? Come on. Aren't you glad you don't have to, man, oh man, I wonder what we're going to have for dinner five years from now. You know, that'll be my next meal. Right? I mean, I don't know about you, but I, I like to eat. I'm glad he designed us to need daily bread. You know, there's, there's two kinds of people. I actually believe there's three kinds of people, but there's people who eat to live, right? And then there's people that what? Live to eat, okay? And my wife shouted that one out because my wife is a person who lives to eat, okay? And I'm pretty much, I would have said that I'm an eat to live person, but I'm actually that person in the middle, okay? My, my wife's amazed because for that 30 years that I've worked in the warehouse, I brought a peanut butter and jelly sandwich to work, Almost every, at least 29 and a half years, okay? 
Now, my wife will also tell you that I make the best peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. You better, after 29 years, okay, you better have, and she didn't even make them for me, okay, because I was up really, really early. But listen, and she would be like, what, don't you want something? Uh, it's lunchtime. Man, don't you want, like, oh, yeah, this, and, and it's like, no, man, I just need something to keep me going. And I, and Lori's like, no, not, my wife does not eat just to keep her going, okay? It's like, no. And, you know, and, and even when we go out sometimes, and even, I probably shouldn't share this, I'll get in trouble, but so, so we came to pray. When I came out to pray the week before, I drove out here, prayed, and went home. No, not with my wife, okay? We drove out here, oh, we got to go to lunch, right? We got to go to lunch, got to go somewhere to eat, right? Listen, listen, I'm glad, I am glad God did not design us like that rascal up there. We, myself included, we love to eat. God created us that way. Now, now some of us go overboard, okay? Myself included at times, okay? But listen to me, for the most part, God created us this way. He could have created us to not need daily bread, but he didn't. He didn't. And maybe he didn't because it reminds us that we need to depend on him every single day. Every single day. Listen to me. He did not say, he did not say, give us this day our annual bread. And can I be honest? I'd rather pray that, right? Come on, wouldn't you? Let's be honest, just for a moment. Lord, if we could just simply pray, Lord, give us our annual bread, and I won't have to worry about it for another year. Give us, now, now let me put it this way. Give us our daily, give us our annual daily bread. I still want it daily. Okay? I don't want it once a year. So, so give us our daily bread annually, and then I don't have to worry about it, praying about that for another year. That's not what he did. That's not what he's saying. He's saying, I want you to pray today for your daily bread and tomorrow for tomorrow's bread. Every single day. Listen, God doesn't want to talk to us. God doesn't want to hear from us annually. He doesn't want to hear from us monthly. He doesn't want to hear from us weekly. He wants to hear from you and I daily, daily. That's why he created us this way, because now we have to depend on him for our daily bread. Now we have to come to him and ask him for daily bread. You see, that's what the Lord's Prayer is saying here. Come to me, ask me, depend on me for your daily physical needs, and I will meet them. Now, now watch this, though, because God wants us to pray for our physical needs, but there's something else in that verse. God wants us also to pray for our spiritual needs for our spiritual provisions. And, and while I was studying all of this, I'll, I'll read commentaries and different things. There was plenty of, uh, I wouldn't call it a debate, but different, different mindsets, different ideas on whether Matthew 6, 11, give us our daily bread, was talking about physical bread or whether he was actually talking about spiritual bread. A lot of debate on that, whether Jesus was, was telling us to pray for our spiritual bread. And, and here's my answer to that. Why not? both. Why not both? Because there's plenty of verses and there's plenty of references to God supplying our physical needs, right? There's plenty of verses. Uh, I wrote one down. Um, I, I didn't write the address, but we know this verse. My God, what? Shall supply all, I, all of my needs according to his riches and glory. So my God wants to provide what? All of my physical needs. And I could go on and on. There's lots of verses that say God wants to provide for our physical needs. But listen, listen. In Matthew 6, 11, he uses the word bread, not food. Why not? Why not? Give us this day our daily food. Why not? Why not? And I think this is me. This is my thought. Maybe because the spiritual parallels the natural. The spiritual parallels the physical in this sense. There is a physical meaning for bread, right? But how many of you know there's a spiritual meaning for bread too? There really is. There's a spiritual meaning for bread. Let me give you a few verses and then I'll tie all this together. So let me give them to you real quick. If you have your Bibles, you can open them up. They'll be on the back screen. I'm going to read these two and I'll tie it together. But it says this in Deuteronomy 8.3. And he fed you with manna 
this is the children of Israel when they left Egypt. He fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by what? By physical bread, by bread alone. But man lives by every what? Every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So God is telling us right there, listen, you don't, you're not going to just live on bread alone. Then Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, Jesus comes along and says the very same thing. It is written, and he's speaking to the devil. He says, it is written, man shall not live by physical bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So what he's saying here, what these verses are saying is, you and I, we can't live on just physical bread. You can't. We can't live on just physical bread. But now he makes it really clear right here in John chapter 6, verse 31 to 35. He says this, just Jesus speaking. Jesus says this. Our fathers ate the manna in the desert. Well, Jesus didn't say that. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. That's what they were asking. They were, they were asking Jesus basically this question. Our fathers ate the manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven. But my father gives you, watch this, my father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he, who is the he? Jesus. Is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So who's he talking about here? I got to make it clear. He's talking about Jesus. And he's saying, he's saying, my father, yeah, Moses, they gave you bread in, in the wilderness. But my father in heaven has sent down the true bread, which is him, Jesus. My Father in heaven has sent down the true bread. Now watch this, verse 34. Then they, then those that were there, the disciples in them, they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. Give us this bread always. Now, now it goes to verse 35, but there's a verse right in between there that the translators couldn't translate because they didn't have a word for it. Let, let me tell you what that word was. It, 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 Jesus is basically telling him, so my father is giving you the true bread, myself, Jesus, that has come down from heaven. And their response was, oh, Lord, give us this bread always. And the next verse, well, I think what Jesus really said was, ah, ah, like, ah. In other words, come on. You guys just don't get it, do you? And they didn't. They didn't. They weren't getting it. And I think if you could put another verse in there, I honestly think Jesus probably went, oh, oh. Because then he goes on with verse 35. And Jesus said to them, and I think he almost was like, read my lips, right? I think Jesus says to them, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. And he who comes to me shall never hunger. And he who believes in me shall never thirst. So do you see the parallel here? There is a physical bread. And I don't know about you, but I love, I love that physical bread. Amen. I went on, how many of you ever been on the keto diet? I went on the keto diet with my wife uh, for about six years. If it seemed like six years, okay? It was probably only a few months. But you know what you can't have on the keto diet? Bread. Bread. I mean, she would order a pizza and scrape the top off and eat it. And I'm just like, you just ruined a perfectly good pizza, right? But, but you can't have bread. And, and I love bread. But listen, I don't know how I just got sidetracked on all of that. Okay, listen. There is a physical bread. There is a physical bread. But Jesus comes along and says, listen, bread is spiritual also. There is a physical meaning for bread. And there is a spiritual meaning for bread. And Jesus comes along and says, I am the bread of life. So, so follow my line of thinking here. Do you think it would be okay that, that, that when we pray, to pray for daily bread, not only physical daily bread, but do you think it would be okay to pray for spiritual daily bread every day also? Come on, I do. Come on, I think that. I think not only do I think it's the okay, I think that's what he's saying right here. I think he wants us to pray. I think God wants us. I think that's what the Lord's prayer is saying right here. I think he's saying, I think he's trying to tell us, listen, I want you to pray for a daily word from me. That's what God is saying right here. I want, I want to give you a daily word, daily bread. 
And that's what he's telling us to pray. Lord, would you give me a word from you today? That's the spiritual side of what he's saying. And now listen, you have a situation in your life. And then listen, for, for any of you here this morning, maybe you're going through something right now. You're going through a situation in your life. And listen, maybe it's your health. We talked about after that song that there's no other name. Man, there's lots of people battling some health issues. And maybe you're at a point in your life, there's a situation, there's an issue in your health. Maybe there's an issue in somebody in your family's health, a loved one, a friend. Maybe you're going through a situation in your family, relationships. Maybe it's a situation in your finances. Maybe, maybe a situation in your business, maybe with your kids. And you fill in the blank there. You fill in the blank there, a job or whatever. But listen, maybe, maybe you're going through something right now and just follow me on this because this was my crazy thought you're going through something right now and listen not even a supernatural hamburger would take care of that are you following what i'm saying not even a supernatural physical bread would take care of that issue you need a word from god you, a word from god in that situation in that moment in that time would lift that burden off of you, would carry you to the next day, would carry you through that situation. See, listen, I believe, I believe that's what this prayer is talking about. He's talking about, listen, pray for your physical bread. But I also want you to come to me daily for a word from me. Daily bread. Listen, the children of Israel, they had to go out. If, if you're familiar with the story in, in Exodus, they had to go out every single day. And, and they didn't just get to sit in their tent and, oh, the manna came down from heaven through their tent walls, and into their kitchens. They had to go out and what? And get it. And get it. Listen to me. God wants to give you a daily word, but guess what? You got to go get it. You got to go get it. You got to go get it. Listen, this is just a simple way, one simple way. How many of you, again, I don't get kickbacks from this, you version, you have it on your phone, right? Lots of great reading on there. I like you version because it actually gives you a verse for the day. It gives you daily bread. It gives you daily bread. Every day it gives you a verse for the day. Now listen, listen though. I think that's great, awesome. Sign up, do it, whatever, it's free. And I think you should have daily bread. But if you only eat once, <laughs> if you only eat once a day and it's just a little tiny snack, guess what? You're going to be one skinny hurting puppy, right? You're going to be starving to death. You're going to be starving to death. So as great as I think that is, listen to me. You and I, you and I, we need to be actively going after daily spiritual bread. Seeking a word after God. Amen. God wants to speak to us. And here's what the Lord's Prayer is telling us. Ask me. Just ask me. It's almost, to me, it's almost like God is saying, man, I dare you. <laughs> I dare you to ask me for some physical bread. I dare you to ask me for a word from God in that situation that you're going through. I dare you to ask me. I believe that's, now watch this. The Lord's prayer ends in verse 13. We read it earlier. It's our Father which art in heaven, how be thy name, again, all that, amen. 12 verses later, okay, 12 verses later, same chapter, in Matthew 6, 25 to 34, we're not going to look at it, but in Matthew chapter 6, 25 to 34, Jesus begins to talk to them about worry. And he tells them, listen, don't worry about what? The first thing. How many of you know what it is? Food. Same chapter. How many verses later? 12 verses later, Jesus says, hey, listen, don't worry about bread. Don't worry about food. He says, here's literally what he says. Don't worry about food or drink. Don't worry about the clothes that you're to wear. And he literally says this. Don't worry about your life. Don't worry about your life. Now, now I, I don't want you to get mixed up. This isn't Jesus coming along and saying, hey, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's no big deal. Don't worry about it. Listen, I think that verse should have been in our series straight out of content right? Straight out of content. Because I think sometimes we read that verse and we take it out of context, straight out of context. We take it out of context because here's what's going on in that whole chapter. And basically this is Jesus saying, you asked me to teach you to pray. Then he teaches them the Lord prayer. So I've taught you to ask and pray. So don't worry. <laughs> so don't worry. Isn't that what's going on? Isn't that the context of what's going on here? 
teach us to pray. And Jesus says, okay, I'm going to teach you how to pray. And he teaches them how to pray. And then he follows it up with, now that I've taught you how to pray, guess what? Don't worry. I've taught you, and literally we talked about this, the Lord's Prayer in the middle is filled with asking. He says, I've taught you how to ask, so don't worry. So don't worry. Listen, here's my thought. Could it be, okay, could the answer to not worrying just simply be prayer? <laughs> could it? Come on, think about it. Could it be, could prayer be the answer to not worrying? Let me jump to the next one. Matthew 6, 12. You know what? How many of you are going to be here next week? Okay, you better. You better if you want to hear Matthew 6, 12. Um, I would have to fly. Let me give you that verse, and we're not going to look at it. Okay. Matthew 6, 12 says this. And forgive us our what? Our debts as we forgive our debtors. I'm not even going to go into that. Okay? Because... I don't want to try to cut it short. Because how many of you know that forgiveness is huge in the kingdom of God? And I will just say this. Listen, unforgiveness will ruin your life. Unforgiveness, listen to me, Christian or not this morning, people out there, unforgiveness will ruin your health. It has the potential to ruin your health, to ruin relationships. And unforgiveness actually has the potential to ruin your relationship with God. And we need to take that one seriously. And, and that's really why I don't just want to try to run through it in the next 13 minutes, 12 minutes, however long I have. I don't want to try to push through that and then say, okay, amen, God bless you, you're, on, you're dismissed. That one is huge. That one is huge. So, so I'm going to leave it at that. But I also want to tell you, you need to be here next week. Amen? But listen, I want to focus then just for a moment. I want to close in prayer. And now we have a little extra time. I want you and I, I want us to pray. I don't know how much you know about Ignite Church, but we're, man, we're praying church. We have prayer at 9, 9, 10 every Sunday morning. We start the service 9, 10 with prayer. We finish the service opening up the altars in prayer. It is huge. It is so, so important. So important that Jesus took the time and said, listen, I'm literally going to teach you guys how to pray. I'm literally going to teach you how to come to our Father and ask Him for things. And this morning, we've looked at the fact that God wants you to ask. Now, now, now remember last week, if you don't ask correctly, you can ask a miss. Because sometimes we think, well, I did ask, and I didn't get this, or I didn't get that. And I told you a couple weeks ago, man, I've so matured, and you will too, if you most of you already have. But listen, the more mature you are in the Lord, the more mature your asking becomes. Okay, maybe when you're first saved, the first couple weeks, you get a hold of that, that scripture that says, Jesus said, ask whatever you want in my name, and I will give it to you. And if you're like me, at the first couple of weeks being saved, you were praying for a Ferrari at that point. You're like, yeah, ask whatever. I want a Ferrari, right? But then as you mature in the Lord, you begin to realize, no, I need to. He said, ask whatever you want in my name, in his name, with his will, in his kingdom. Well, that same thing applies. What we learned last week applies to asking for your physical needs, for asking for your physical bread. And listen, there are some of you here this morning. You maybe need a better job. Maybe you need to make more money. There are some of you here, you need to live in a better house. You need to live in a safer neighborhood. You need to live in a, man, maybe you need a better car, maybe a bigger car. Maybe you need a smaller car. Maybe you just flat out need a dependable car, amen? And you haven't got it yet. I want to I wanna just take the next five minutes or so, and I want us to begin to pray. I want us to begin to pray, intercede for one another, and begin to come before God and acknowledge the fact that, yes, he's our father. He has all authority. Everything that he has, he has given us that authority, and he wants to give to you. He wants to provide for your needs. And I want you, real, real quick, and we're going to do two stages. I'm making this up as I go along, okay, because I just feel the Holy Spirit in this place. And, 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 and I want you to get this first, and then we'll move on to the second thing as far as spiritual provision. I want you right now, and I want to take a little time. You can put some music on or however we're going to do it here. 
I want you to pray for a physical need that is on your heart right now. And listen, maybe, maybe you've came into this place. And I remember one of the Michelle's prayer points at 9, 10 prayer this morning was, was to put aside any distracting thought. Listen, if you're here this morning and you have a need that is pressing you, a physical need that is pressing you, what ends up happening is it becomes the center of your thoughts. You can come to church and yeah, you're worshiping, you're hearing a message, but where's your thoughts? on solving that problem, on meeting that need. And God is telling us this morning, listen, I want you to come into my house. I want you to ask me and know that in your asking, I've got it. I've got it. I don't want you to worry about this anymore. I've taught you how to pray. I've taught you how to ask. Now don't worry about it. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the message. You can check us out on Instagram, Facebook, or online at ignitechurchoc.com.